Hello, welcome back to Grumpy Gaming, I'm Bob. And today we're taking a look at Super Dungeon Brothers, which has come out today for PS4, Xbox One and PC via Steam. We are taking a look at the PS4 version. As at the time of making this video, I've probably had two, three hours worth of playtime with the game. Um, basically, it's a dungeon brawler. Um with randomly generated dungeons and a fairly simplistic progression system. When you start a game you can pick a bro to play as and a weapon for them to wield. There are four classes of weapons, sword, hammer, crossbow and wand and these four varieties of each. You start the game with ages of incursion sword and pain Halo crossbow unlocked. You unlock further weapons in the game by collecting the shards of either green, purple or gold. Um, I, in my couple of hours of the game I've had enough shards together to collect, to unlock the base hammer and the base wand. So we now have one of each class of weapon. Um, they all play slightly differently. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at each of the different weapon types. First up we have the sword weapon type. Which the default one is the Aegis of Incursion. With its ultimate the Bronado. All the weapons basically have three move types. You have a light attack, a standard attack. Which is done with R2 on the... PS4 joypad. You have a heavy attack formed using R1 and then you have your ultimate attack which is performed with the triangle button. So on the sword we have heavy attack which is kind of a spinning attack. Light attack is just a standard slash and then on the triangle, it's the Bronado on this sword. There are different uh, abilities for each type and each weapon of that type. The second weapon type in the game is the Hammer. The first of which you unlock is the Tenacious Crusher. The, which has the ultimate called the Brocano. Uh, this one was unlocked using the purple shards, I think, if I remember correctly. So let's take a look at this in action. Okay, so the hammer's move set consists again of a light attack, a heavy attack, which is kind of a ground pound, which is charged up by doing, by killing things with your light attack. And then so we'll charge it up a little bit first so you can see it in action. I think five times is the maximum it can charge to. So now it's charged we can then use the heavy attack and miss everything with it because we're useless. Actually I don't understand why that heavy attack's not. Okay that's a Interesting thing I've just found, the heavy attack doesn't work if you're on a staircase. Which is good to know. Okay, that's the, its light and heavy attack in action. And then it ha its ultimate is a ground pound volcano thing, the Brocano. Which damages all enemies in the vicinity. We'll just show that again. So that's the hammer's attacks in action. The next weapon type we have is the crossbow, as you can imagine, that's a ranged weapon. Uh, the one we have unlocked at the start is Pain Hailer, that's one of the two weapons unlocked by default. So let's see that in action. Okay, so here we have the crossbow. Being a ranged weapon, we can use the right hand stick to aim it twin, twin stick shooter style. It's Light attack fires one arrow at once, and the heavy attack fires a all your arrows in one burst. It's kind of a fanned attack. 
You do have a reload timer on the crossbow. You see the little green arrow in the top corner next to the health bar. That is your current ammo level. And when you get down to one, it slowly starts recharging up itself. But if you let it get all the way down to zero, you then have a delay before it recharges. So the idea is to try and keep it at a reasonable level. So you're uh, not having to reload all the time, not having to wait for the reload. Uh, the heavy attack uses all the ammunition in one burst, so you're forced into a reload. So you have a delay before you can use the weapon again. And the weapon's ultimate is a basically a, a damage modifier. You do one and a half times damage and your movement speed and fire rate are increased in accordance with that. Up, up, up. And the arrows set things on fire, which I guess is where the extra damage comes from. <sighs> so that's the crossbow. And finally we have the wand weapon type. The first one we open up is the Howling Gale. The wand is a ranged weapon, similar to the crossbow, but uses magic. There's no magic like mana bars or anything like that to worry about. It's just a magic type weapon. So let's take a look at that in action. Okay, so now we've got the wand. It's light attack. Fires a ball of light that when it hits an enemy, it passes through it can pass through them. So you can get multiple enemies with one shot. Heavy attack fires a grenade type ball of light that does area of effect damage. You can find some enemies to fight. Here we go. And the weapons, this this one's ultimate. Perform, pro, provides a buff to healing for you and uh, your teammates if you're playing in co-op. Now we've finished looking at the weapon types, what about the game itself? Well, let's go in and we'll do a run. There's basically two different modes. There's quest mode and challenges mode. Uh, when you're playing locally, uh, you have a daily and a weekly challenge. They are fixed dungeons that you have to get through and get as high a score as you can possibly get. We will go in on a quest though. There's a number of areas to open up. I'm still on the first area, Crypt Time. First world. So we'll go in there. We will... As I said before, basically you can see the stats at the bottom. The characters are basically all the same. They're just recolors and reskins. They make different quips. And have slightly different voices, but they are pretty much the same. I'm not sure what that is, but I think it may be selecting different helmets because you can unlock helmets in the store. And then we pick a weapon. We will go in with the Aegis of Incursion, which is the starting sword, which will be the weapon most people will start with in the game. And we'll go in. Now, first thing you'll notice is the loading times aren't particularly great. Um, for a game that's simplistic is too strong a word but it's not an overly complicated game it's not got huge levels or anything like that and extravagant effects and stuff there's a lot of music but it's not it's not what I would call a huge game we're not loading in a Doom level or a, or a Destiny map but the loading times are not very good at all they are uh, for what the game is, it's very poor. We also have to sit through this, well we don't have to, we can skip it, but we also get this same cutscene on every playthrough. Oh, Freddy! What fair boy bear convinced you to buy this? Boom! Kill that wreckage with fire! 
I guess there's one of these videos for each world because this is all about how they got to go to Childheim or whatever, Cryptheim. Across the land. What? It is foretold the world will be saved by a killer new van. I need to revoke your online shopping privileges. In a race against the clock. As ever, it's it's very metal, the whole idea of playing records backwards and all that was very big in the 80s. The noble, the crazy one, known as Freddy, has rescued the final of prophecy from the darkest corner of the record store bargain bin. Now I offer thee a quest to save the world and become rock legends. Sounds like hard work. What do we get out of it? <clears throat> Fine. On this quest, you will forge epic weapons, yeah! discover new ways to annoy people, <laughs> earn hero status to impress whomever your heart desires. Ooh. Four rock huh? dudes must unleash their awesome. Let's do this. Yeah? Let's do this. Let's, Let's go. go. Now go. Your mileage on these will depend on what your sense of humour is. It's uh, a little bit stupid. So here we go. So yeah, the main game, basically we do the here it is. dungeon crawl. Um, at the, in this starting area, you have a number of... Um, what are they? What are they? I can't even think of the word. Things you light. And you can act. You can activate them, and they will give you different things for the run. That one, this one, time warp slows down the speed of traps and obstacles, subtracts two hundred parts. Basically, that one decreases difficulty, but you'll get less points for it. This one, I believe, will decrease does de decreases difficulty as well. We uh, that increases your power of your weapons, but you get less points. Or you can pick one of the other ones to increase the damage. You take, increase the difficulty, and for that you will get more points. Uh, we will go through on a standard run, we won't activate any of those. So let's make a start. And basically you fight you fight your way through the dungeon to the end. As, as I said when I was talking about the weapons, you have the basic weapon types. You also have the ability to pick up certain objects including other players and certain enemies that you can then throw at enemies use them as a weapon so let's pick this guy up and throw him at his it's missed so it didn't really do anything when you're uh, doing that when you're throwing or using a ranged weapon you can use the second stick to change the direction you're facing and move in a different direction at the same time using the other stick. Twin stick shooter style. But if you're playing a melee character, you're probably just going to use the main stick if you're playing a melee weapon, sorry, not character. See, some areas are like this, where basically the guys are just going to keep coming until I move on. Other areas we will get to and a door will close and we won't be able to get through the area until we kill everything. As I said in the intro, it's the dungeons seem to be procedurally generated. Uh, here you, here you can see one of the first issues I have with the game. You can get some really bad frame slowdown. When there's a lot of enemies on screen at a time and you kill them, they, uh, the particle, of, particle effects do seem to tank the frame rate sometimes. It is dealing with quite a lot of enemies on the screen, but as you can see from the art style, it's not overly complicated. I wouldn't have thought... It's taxing the PS4 system that hard. We are playing on PS4. I can't remember whether I said that in the intro or not, but we are. But it does throw quite a lot of enemies at you at times. 
you smash up things to pick up coins, but they also may have uh, beer steins in them, which are give you health back. And basically, it's a fairly simplistic hack and slash brawler. Uh, there's not a lot of complexity to the combat. You have, as I said on the web, you have your heavy and light attacks. You have a roll, dodge roll move that you can do a couple of times before he gets your character gets a little dizzy and then he can't do it for a few seconds. And then you have the ultimate moves, and that's about your lot, really. And the well, on the picking up things and throwing them around. You have you start with five lives as the, as your health goes down. Uh, when you die, you will be able to revive yourself to using a life. I'm assuming that in the multiplayer mode. I know you can revive other characters, so I mean, uh, they can revive you. I don't know whether that uses a life a lot, because to be honest, I've not had a chance to give the multiplayer a try. Either locally or online. Online because it's the day before release, so there's nobody online. Uh, I thought there may be a few other people who are doing reviews, who've got review copies, like I have, who may have, well have, who may have been online. Doing some, we can revive ourselves there. That uses one of the lives. I said we, I thought we may, there may have been a few other people doing reviews who were online, but it couldn't seem to find me a match. So I've not been able to try out the online uh, multiplayer, and uh, I haven't had any visitors today, so I've not managed to. Uh, I couldn't manage to get it's Halloween, so everybody's busy, so I couldn't get somebody around to give me a hand. In the local multiplayer match. So we've just been solo in it so far. Uh, you'll, have seen, you'll have seen just then come out of the chest a little blue orb. They come out basically, either blue, yellow, red, or green orbs can come out of chests or enemies when they are killed. And they are. They can only be picked up by the corresponding player colour. So while we're up, while we're playing single player with the blue guy with Axel, there, it will only drop blue ones. But when you play multiplayer, apparently it will drop ones of varying colours that can be picked up by the appropriate colour. And those give you a buff for this run, a, a passive. That one gave us a poison aura around us. So I guess that means any enemies that come to get too close to us. We'll get poison damage. We've made it to the end of the first of depth one, so we we get a nice little chest at the end. Uh, that was another one there, so we, that increases max health. So we've got a little bit of a max health buff. Once you, the, you reach the end of a, a dungeon depth, you then get to spend the gold on one of three upgrades to your weapon. Uh, it, these vary depending on the weapon. With this sword, it's always these three that you get a choice of. We will go, I think we will get the Rune of Protection and we'll get Beefcake, so we'll give ourselves a bit of, bit more health and a little bit of uh, protection while we're close combat. The loading, loading after depth one doesn't seem too bad, so I wonder if the lo I think the loading time may be so bad on depth one while it's loading in the stupid cinematic. It probably should give you the option to skip that before you get to it to save on the loading time instead of loading the whole thing in and then giving you the option to not watch it after you've spent five minutes watching it load in. Well, five minutes is excessive. A couple of minutes. Now, when we reach the end of depth two, we will face a mini boss. You get the little map in the top corner. I'm not quite sure what we have a threat meter, but I don't know what effect that has on anything. It doesn't never explained it in the tutorial. There was a fairly simple tutorial just showing you the basic controls. Um, 
but it didn't mention anything about what that meter meant. It just seems to climb up until we reach the end of the level. You see the, uh, sometimes you can activate some of the traps yourself and use them against the enemies in a level, such as that spinning axe thing there. We could, if there was mobs all around it, as there was when I first stepped on it, you could step on that button and use it to kill the mobs with. There is a combo system of sorts in the uh, combat, but it seems to be more just to multiply your score. It doesn't affect damage or anything like that, and there's not really any skill involved with doing the combos. It's just button mashing. The combat is fairly simplistic. Make sure you smash everything up, because there's coins in everything. So the levels are procedural. You don't die by falling off, which is good. It doesn't take a life off you, which is really good. I have run into a few problems with uh, camera angle. Occasionally, the level's laid out in a way where you're having to effectively fight off camera. You're, you're stuck behind something. You can't see yourself. You have fight. There's no way to rotate the camera or anything. It's always at this fixed isometric perspective and some of the level pieces do seem to have not been designed taking that into account. Here we have a shop which we can seems to pop up every every other dungeon depth where you can buy certain items they usually just get your health back a little bit see we can 200 coins to refill our health to full get another ultimate charge. Your ultimates are charged, you only have two charges by default. Um, or, we can, or we can buy an extra life. Uh, I think we'll just refill our health. And we'll continue on our way. And I think I may have told, I may have issued an incorrect fact. I don't think it's it's the next depth, it's depth 3 where we face the mini boss, I think. Sometimes you get these complicated rooms full of puzzles and traps. To steer your way through, and obviously there's different paths you can take in some room, some... Some of these rooms in these mazes will lead us to a... Uh, if we go that way, we can get a treasure chest. We double back ourselves on here, there's a treasure chest in there. And if I can do it without hitting all, this, all the spikes along the way, even better. Movement speed of the characters is uh, very slow. With the pace of the combat, I know the combat's simplistic, but it's fairly fast paced, but your walking speed of your character is very slow. Would have liked it to have been a little, a little bit quicker. Right now, here we have a boss fight. We can uh, pick up these things. I'm assuming that this bit is not uh, procedural, this mini boss. It's been this same guy on every run I've done so far, so I'm assuming that there's no variation on that. Uh, 
Um, with this guy, it seems to be better to just try and fight him at range by throwing these things at you. At him, because if you get too close, he proper batters you. go For some reason all the little stuff that was with him doesn't despawn when you kill him but anyway we kill him so he's dropped he's dropped that gives you a slightly closer look at those things i was talking about little blue orb and that one gives us a dodge boost to our dodge roll so we can dodge roll further <laughs> and if we make it towards the end of the level now we will have our a reward for killing the boss which will be a crate full of the shards we then use to unlock other weapons and that's bit the weapons is basically the only progression system it's not like something like um escape the gungeon where you would find a weapon in the game and then that would be then unlocked for future runs and it would be random this you unlock by using the shards to unlock them and then you pick your weapon at the start of the run and that's your weapon for the full run you can upgrade the weapon as you run through the run as you go through the run the weapon can be upgraded either here or by pickups by your passives that you pick up but you're pretty much stuck with the same weapon for the entire run which doesn't bring much variety to the run um and basically, that's it. There's not a huge amount else to say about the game. It's uh, I've not had a chance to play it local multiplayer, as I said, but I suspect it'd be good fun party game, like like your games like Gauntlet and stuff. It it does remind me a lot of something like a Gauntlet or a. Not that I not I was going to say Towerfall, but it's not really. There's no PvP aspect to it. So you've not got a like a brawl mode where you're all fighting each other. Not that I've found anyway. Uh, or whether, I don't know whether that's coming. Or whether they have any plans for that, I don't know, but may be an interesting thing for them to think of though with the game being the weapon choice and the characters being pretty much the characters being pretty much the same and the weapon choice being pretty low and them all being a variety on a theme it may it may well make it make a boring uh PvP brawler, which may be why they've not done it. As I say, as a party game, all running through, reviving each other, fighting things, a lot will be on your tasty music and your... Uh, the music's pretty good. There are music packs for different music styles. There's a heavy metal one coming, a dubstep one, and an eight uh, an eighties one, eighties her bands soundtrack. And the I say a lot will be depend on your sense of humor and your taste in music. How far you get with that? See, there's an example of. You disappear behind the camera, uh, behind the wall, and the camera can't see you. That's not an area where there was something to fight, but the same would be down here. I don't know what... There is stuff to fight down here, and I can't see what the hell's going on. The ability to turn the camera, or for this scenery to go translucent so you can see through it, see what's happening, would probably be something... That they should probably look into. Yeah, but I, my issue mainly with the game is there's not a huge amount to it. It's uh, 
I can't see myself spending hour upon hour upon hour playing it. It's it's not some Enter the Gungeon always had that one more run appeal that I don't think this has got. For what it's trying to do, it does it pretty well, but I just don't think it's got too much staying power. It's uh, it's not too ambitious. They've played it safe a little bit. So all in all, I'd recommend you give it a try. I believe it's coming. It's going to be uh, the one of the games with gold on Xbox One. So if you if you are an Xbox One player. You could actually try it for free if you've got Xbox Live. And I definitely recommend you give it a give it a look. But would I recommend it as a purchase? Mm, I don't know. I really couldn't say. It's if you're looking for a good multiplayer brawler local, then. Your choices are pretty limited in these day and age. It's a game style that's kind of gone out of fashion a little bit. So if that's the type of game you like, if you uh, if you miss your double dragons and your gauntlets and your uh, turtles games and things like that, then maybe worth taking a look at it. Uh, it's a little bit simplistic compared to some of those, but if that's an itch you've got, You've not got a lot, a lot of options for scratching it, so it may be worth taking a look. But that's it. I can't, I can't see it holding my interest for a great amount of time. It's not going to be an end to the dungeon where I'm going to spend an hour and hour and hour trying to get that next run, just to trying to get a little bit further and get the next unlock. It's, I can't see it. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts. Please leave your thoughts in the comments. Uh, if you like what you see in this video, a like would be appreciated. Subscribe for more content. Remember to follow us on twitter.com slash gumpygaming72, twitch.tv slash gumpygaming72 for live streams. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>